the Electronic Church of God of Arizona brings you the Lord's Care Ministry, and it all comes from God's Library, the Bible. Welcome to the Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Prayer Ministry. Today is the fifth work day of the week, the day that our Gregorian calendar calls a Thursday. That's how the pagan wants to call it. We have to live in this world with them, so that's what we have to use. It also is November 8th, the year 2012. Again, that is a pagan date that we have to use. Well, brethren, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, a year to search for knowledge and truth, day 315 of the year 2012. Today's little study, The Unrivaled Power of Prayer. The Unrivaled Power of Prayer. Brethren, I suggest you take a pad and paper write chapter and verses down so that you'll be able to go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. But in the meantime, brother, you can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you're able to open up your own Bible, read chapter and verse right along with us. You'll get much more out of it that way. Okay, let's get right on over into the un rival power of prayer and to do that we're going to go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Be realized that we are energized by the Spirit of God for prayer. And we know what it is to pray in accordance with the Spirit. But we do not often realize that the Spirit of the Father prays prayers in which we cannot utter ourselves. When we or you become a begotten child of God and are indwelled by Him, He expresses for us the unutterable He, the Spirit, in you. Make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And that's chapter 8 and verse 27. And God searches your heart. Not to know what your conscience prayers are, but to find out what the prayer of your spirit is. The spirit of God uses the nature of the believer as a temple in which to offer his prayers for of intercession. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, breaking into the verse, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ cleansed the temple, as we find in Mark chapter 11 and verse 16, he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. God's Spirit will not allow you to use your body for your own convenience. Jesus ruthlessly cast out everyone who bought and sold in the temple and said in Mark chapter 11 and verse 17, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Have we come to realize that our body is a temple of God's Holy Spirit? If so, we must be careful to keep it undefiled for Him. We have to remember that our conscience life, even though only a small part of our total, total person, is to be regarded by us as temple of God's Holy Spirit. He will not he will be responsible for the unconscious part, which we do not know. We must pay careful attention to and guard the conscious part of which we are responsible. Gracious Holy Savior, cleanse my tears, purify my penance, refine my hope, 
and accept me as needy and helpless, who can claim nothing. I count on you because you have bidden all who are weary and heavy laden to come to you. Brethren, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 through 24, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greek foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jew and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. The Bible by Bradbury. In Psalms chapter 119, verse 9, How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed, therefore, according to thy word. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Do you make void the word of God? Here we are on the fifth day of the week. Are you working for God these five days? If not, change your ways. By working for God doesn't mean to go out on the corner and yell, Holy Jesus! No, it doesn't mean that. It means for you to show them the way of life by your own living. And that'd be working for God. If you start doing that, if you start showing them the way of life through you, they will notice it right away. And that's working for God. Brethren, if you want to see the kingdom and have holy salvation and eternal salvation with the Father and the Son, get down on your knees and repent from following the tradition of men. Ask the Father and the Son to bring their spirit within you, to drive away all doubt, strengthen your faith, And have him show you that narrow path that leads to that kingdom and eternal salvation. And while you're on your knees, ask him for forgiveness for following the tradition of men. Ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of that love letter he has sent to you. That is in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great, wonderful day. I know I will. Bye for now. Email me at 473 at cox.net or check into my webpage at www.fcg82 dot com backslash h2 dot htm thank you